adventure of the day. My name is Bobby Blakey and I'm here to invite you to read the Bible. And today's scripture is Matthew chapter two. Now, right when you open this chapter up, you're gonna read the words wise men and you're gonna see Jesus was born. And here's what I gotta say. Stop thinking about Christmas. Look at this. Look where I am right now. Does this look like Christmas to you? As you can see, we have no presents, no snow, no jingle bells, no mistletoe. There is no Christmas going on here as we get into Matthew chapter two today. So I know we hear about the wise men and the birth of Jesus and we go back to December 25th, but I want you to see what Matthew's really saying. He's not giving us a Christmas story. He's given us an epic story of the whole Bible. The point that Matthew is making today is look at all these prophecies that were perfectly fulfilled, ancient promises from God that happened now in the life of Jesus Christ. Prophecy is the point of today's scripture. That is what Matthew is trying to say to us as he four different times you're gonna see in Matthew 2, He's telling you that what is happening now in the life of Jesus is fulfilling a prophecy that God already made in the Old Testament. This is what God said he was gonna do in Isaiah chapter 42, verses eight and nine. God says, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols, behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Here's God calling his own shots. He says, one of the ways that you're gonna know I'm God, that you're gonna know this is my revelation, my word to you, is I'm gonna tell you what happens before it happens. That's how we know the Bible is God's word, because of the fulfilled prophecies. He's going to prophesy something in the Old Testament and then we're going to watch it come to pass in the New Testament. And Matthew is trying to prove to you this Jesus, he's really the Christ, the Son of God, because look at how he fulfills the prophecy. Prophecy is a reason to read the Bible. If you're a believer, you should worship God that he is telling us what he's going to do before he does it. And if you're an unbeliever, this is really a reason you should give God's word your full consideration because God is going to call very specifically what happens with the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ hundreds of years before he ever does it. And there is nothing else like this in all the religious material you can read on planet Earth, like God calling his own shots. So yesterday I introduced you to the box set of the New Testament, a collection of the books of the Bible that are written in the first century after the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, today I'd like to introduce you to my box set of the Old Testament. This is the Tanakh, and I was able to get this in the Jewish quarter of the old city in Jerusalem when I went there last summer. And the Old Testament, as it was understood at the time of Jesus Christ, it was in Hebrew, and it was in three different books, three different sets of books. There was the law, the first five books of the Old Testament. There were the prophets, and then there were the Psalms or the writings. And so the law is written somewhere around 1400 BC and the last of the prophets is 400 BC. So all of these writings are a collection spanning over a thousand years of the history of God's people by so many different authors. And they talk about this one, the Messiah, the Christ, who is going to come. And there are all kinds of references and prophecies about him. And the point that Matthew is making in chapter two is look how God told you what he was gonna do before he did it. Look at how Jesus, even as he's born, even as his parents take him to Egypt and back and up to Nazareth, it's all to fulfill 
prophecy. God is screaming at you right now saying, I called it, can you see it? So the Bible is a collection of books that is divided into two parts. And this is my Hebrew and Greek Bible that I love to reference. So if we open it up here at the front, you're going to be able to see the Greek language there. As we get into the gospel according to Matthew, here it is written in Greek, trying to read it in Greek, interpret it into English. But if we open this book from the back, from the right side, as Hebrew goes from right to left, we will see it written in Hebrew. And as we're seeing it here in Hebrew, this was written hundreds of years before Jesus Christ. But yet it talks about Jesus Christ. In fact, it gives us details about Jesus dying on the cross and rising from the dead that no one could have known but God, and he recorded it hundreds of years before it happened. And so we know that the Old Testament was written before the time of Christ because of the manuscripts. Here's something you need to know about, which is the Dead Sea Scrolls. And these scrolls were already circulated at the time of Jesus. And what they prove is that the Old Testament was already written and established and spread around and known before Jesus comes on the scene. And that means that these things that they wrote by the prophet Isaiah, by the prophet Micah, Hosea, things that they said hundreds of years before Jesus, they weren't doctored or altered or changed after the life of Jesus to match the life of Jesus. No, here's what's true. They actually prophesied Jesus hundreds of years before he was born. That's what Matthew's trying to say to you. This guy, he is the one, he is your savior. God talked about him hundreds of years beforehand. Look, they knew where he would be born. Look, he went to Egypt. Look, he's in Nazareth. Can you see what God is doing? So as you read Matthew chapter two today, pay attention to the prophecies. When the wise men come in and meet with King Herod, and he asks the chief priests and the scribes, where is the king of the Jews to be born? They know the answer because God has already told them. In Micah chapter five, verse two, it's quoted for us and that they would be born in Bethlehem. And what's not quoted for us is where it says in Micah five, two, that his coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. This was God's eternal plan to reveal his son. And he told us he would do it in the Old Testament. And now Matthew's recording how it happened in the new. And three different times he's gonna say, this was to fulfill the word of the prophet. In Matthew, he's gonna quote Hosea 11.1, 1, and he's gonna to refer to Israel's exodus out of Egypt, and now here's Jesus coming out of Egypt. He's gonna to refer to Jeremiah 31.15, back to Israel's time of judgment, and now here's a time of judgment, and as Herod slaughters all of those poor babies up to two years old, that shows you this didn't really happen on Christmas morning, like we think of, it was somewhere between when Jesus was up to two years old and he slaughters those babies. That's a reminder of the time of judgment in the past, but there is now a baby who was not judged. And he ends up in Nazareth, which is a reference uh, to many scriptures. One of them, Isaiah 11.1, 1, which says, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, who's the father of David. Uh, a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. There's gonna come a shoot from the stump of Jesse, there's gonna come a branch off of this tree of the Old Testament that God has been building. There's gonna come a branch, or in Hebrew, a Nazar. See, that's why he lives in Nazareth, because there's a branch that's gonna come, and it's the Nazir, and that's why he ends up in Nazareth. God is calling his shots the whole day today. I hope you can see it in the scripture as you read, praise God for his prophecy. Pray that more people will come to see this is the really the word of God, that Jesus really is the chosen one to save us just as God said he was gonna be. Worship the Lord, pray to the Lord, and I'll see you tomorrow for more scripture. Okay, thanks.